Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, let's continue our session on 3Z interview questions and answers. So, uh, last time uh, we were discussing um, our generalization codes are mutually orthogonal and if they are so, why we are adding a you know, uh, orthogonality factor in the link budget. So, um, yes, generalization codes are mutually orthogonal. Nonetheless, uh, due to multi-path, um, you know, uh, and uh, with variable time delay uh, channels from a same cell are uh, no longer perfectly orthogonal and may interfere with each other. A downlink orthogonality factor that's why I added uh, to the link budget typically 50 to 60 percent uh, you know uh, is added to the link budget yeah, uh, to account for interference and hence uh, reduces the pole capacity also pole capacity we have already discussed. So uh, that's all about uh, like um, uh, the orthogonality factor and why we uh, use uh, orthogonality factor uh, in the link budget. <clears throat> then uh, what is uh, scrambling codes used for and uh, what are the different groups and you know I'll, I'll go a little bit longer like we already discussed scrambling codes and uh, what is, what is the exact planning concept of the scrambling code groups also as we know that uh, uh, scrambling codes are used to separate uh, cells different cells and different uv's from each other um, that is each cell and each uv uh, should have a unique scrambling code uh, there are 512 scrambling codes on the downlink side uh, and millions in the uplink because for each uh, uv we are having a unique scrambling code in the uplink uh, regarding groups, there are 64 uh, code groups with eight uh, eight scrambling codage, and how do we plan uh, for macro layer? Let's say I'm having 24 codes reserved. That depends on uh, how you know uh, we can reserve 20 uh, for macro, you know, 20 for micro, or we uh, may reserve 25 for macro and uh, 17 or you know it is as per requirement. So normally in uh, 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 network planning uh, phase uh, we uh, do uh, 24 code groups uh, out of 64 uh, reserved for uh, macro layer group then uh, 16 code groups we reserve for micro layer and for future expansion 24 code groups reserved for future expansion for sites uh, so that's how we plan the scrambling codes uh, which service the next question is which service usually needs uh, higher power it's it's the CS or the PS or both how it is so considering downlink uh, and uh, taking uh, CS 12.2 K and PS let's say 384 K uh, the R99 services for example processing can required invoice is 25 uh, we already uh, calculated and discussed it earlier in CS 12.2 and uh, uh, processing gain is 10 for PS 384 so the EBN no requirement uh, uh, it's seven for CS uh, 12.2 K and uh, five for PS 384. Therefore, the power requirement is definitely higher in the CS 12.2 uh, than PS 384. What is the EBN no requirement for HSTPA? Well, uh, that's again uh, very basic, and you should uh, know this. Uh, typically, uh, uh, two for 768 kbps services and 5 for 2 mbps hstps services uh, what is noise rise and uh, what does a noise rise um, mean in terms of uh, network loading so how do you define you know noise rise and network load and those things so uh, i would say for every new user added in the uh, added to the service additional noise is added to the network that is each new user causes a noise rise in the system in theory uh, in the theory uh, the noise rise is defined as a ratio of total received wideband power to the total noise power uh, higher noise rise value implies more users are allowed on the network and each user has to transmit higher power to overcome the noise level because you are already in the competition and to overcome the noise you have to radiate with high power. This means a smaller path loss can be tolerated and uh, uh, 
the cell radius reduces to summarize uh, we can say a higher uh, rise uh, you know uh, higher noise rise means uh, higher capacity and smaller footprint and a lower noise uh, means small capacity and a bigger footprint so that's how we define uh, the noise rise and you know uh, the loadings and you know the higher noise rise uh, in terms of network uh, loading and uh, uh, you know the interference also what is pilot pollution we've already discussed so uh, simply speaking uh, when the number of strong cells exceed the active set size exceeds let's say three or four um, uh, there is pilot uh, you know pollution in that area we can say typically the active set size is three yeah? so if there are more than three stronger cells yes so uh, typically uh, the active set is a uh, cell set size is three so if uh, uh, there are more than uh, three strong cells uh, then the, uh, there is a pilot pollution we can uh, conclude uh, definition of a strong cell is like a pilot within uh, you know hand over window size from our strongest cell typically handover window size is between 4 to 6 dB so if, if a signal is better 4 dB or 6 dB normally we add in the active set so if there are more than two cells beside the strong strongest cell within 4, 4 to 8 dB uh, 4 to 6 dB of the strongest cell then uh, there is pilot pollution yes maximum we can allow in the active set size is 3 so more than 3 if, if anybody is again stronger then that that is a pilot polluter what is the typical handover window size in your network? Handover uh, window size is usually uh, minus 4 to 6 dB to harden the network. Um, what is the soft handover and uh, softer handover uh, that we already know soft is uh, when uh, inter e node B uh, handover and uh, soft is uh, intra e node B handover. Uh, during handover, if uh, one cell sends a power down request let's say and two cells send power off request sell the UV power down or up it's very important so let's say we are having three uh, 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 signals coming two two are um, you know requesting the UV to power down you know and uh, and one uh, you, you know signal is coming to power up so normally we go for power down as long as a good link can be maintained it is not necessarily to power up uh, in order to maintain the multiple links maintaining unnecessary multiple links increase the, uh, you know increases the noise rise and cell be avoided the ec anode also becomes bad so we should power down uh, as far as possible uh, suppose uh, we are uh, designing a CS network and a PS network. So, is there a major difference in the uh, design consideration? So, uh, that is very, uh, you know, common question asked when uh, uh, we have a discussion on planning or link budget or you know, initial network or greenfield planning is going on. So, uh, normally this question is asked. So, uh, what is the major difference in designing CS and PS? So, I can say um, server dominance is a key difference. You know, in CS uh, network, uh, we shall limit uh, the number of uh, strong servers in any given area to no more than the active set size three or four, avoiding pilot pollution and you know, um, in the downlink side. In a PS network, however, there isn't any soft uh, handover. So, in HSTPA and in the PS specifically, we don't have any soft handover in the downlink. So, the server dominance uh, is very important here. Uh, ideally, you should have one server uh, dominance in a given area. So, that is challenging. So, that is the main difference between the CS and PS design considerations. So. Um, that's what uh, all about so what is uh, you know uh, the number of fingers uh, in the UE rake receiver rake receivers are also used in uh, 
CDMA system also. So what is what is the number of uh, you know fingers in the UE um, rake receiver? So it is four. So we have four fingers. Um, three we uh, use for collecting the multipath, and one is reserved for the signaling and handover uh, cases. So four fingers. Uh, you know are uh, used by a UE uh, rake receiver what is compressed mode uh, the very uh, popular and uh, uh, very uh, basic question before UE can perform inter frequency or IRAT handover okay so it needs to have uh, some time to lock on to the uh, control channel of the other frequency of the system and listen to the broadcast information um, certain uh, idle pairs are created in the radio frames for this purpose uh, this is called the compressed mode we compressed uh, some of uh, we steal some some time slot or some time to measure the IRAT um, you know uh, frequencies and you know their signal so that's why it's called the compressed mode uh, that's all for today. Um, in the next uh, uh, class, uh, we'll come with some more questions and answer. Uh, thank you so much for watching and um, uh, keep liking, sharing and comment on the video. Do subscribe also for more information and updates. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.